So what's happening on the tools today? Well, I'm starting to do the battening today. Well, we're starting to do the battening today, should I say? <laughs> if you're new to this channel, we're James and Sarah, also known as the whole world or nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers, exploring the world and writing about our travels on our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. I'm just trying to figure out what are the best kind of screws to use because we've got a couple of self-tapping screws that might be possible to use. This is the first one, but it's got a hex head and I'm not sure that that's actually going to sink far enough into the wood um, to be any use to us. The other ones have got like a countersunk head which would be better but they're actually slightly longer. So I'm a little concerned that if they're too long they're going to go through the wood into the metal and they're just out the other side of the van. Oh, so, yeah don't do that. Yeah there's going to be a bit of trial and error going on but uh, I'm that's sure. the, You can't really do a trial and error with that though. The trial is that it goes through the van. Yeah. So what do you think about this? Well you've countersunk it in, the hex. Yeah. I well mean, that's alright isn't it? There's that much sticking out at the bottom. Okay. So hopefully that should be enough to pierce the metal and yeah. then actually stick it in. What do you reckon? I think so. I mean I feel better about it being shorter than longer but obviously we need it to do its job as well. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Alright, so we've put the first button in uh, provisionally. We've put a screw into each end and what I've done is countersunk holes all along it and just popped um, some of these screws in and I'm just going to go along and actually whiz them all up. But before I do that, do you want to just go and check that those two screws that we have put in haven't actually gone through the other side of the van? <laughs> okay. No, it looks all right. It's okay, nothing there. Yeah? Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Okay, I'll whiz these other ones in and then get started on the vertical ones. Just another note as well, I wasn't sure about even putting any of these horizontal ones in because they're not actually going to be doing anything when it comes to cladding because the cladding is going to be going horizontally so it needs to attach to vertical band, if that makes yeah. sense. But, I put them in, I'm going to put these in as well, probably just two of them and the reason is that it's probably, hopefully, going to provide a little bit more stability when we come to building like our seat here and the kitchen as well. Okay. That's the theory. I don't think you can go wrong with putting too many battens in anyway. No, they're pretty light pieces of wood, aren't yeah. they? All right, crack on. Stuck on you. Well, I'm just giving it a tug to test and it feels pretty solid, yeah. It is shaking the whole van, which... That's I always that's, a good test, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so positive. So that's the first one in. Now we're going to start on the vertical ones. Do you want to just explain why we are putting the buttons on after we put the vapour barrier on, or why we decided to do that? Um, right, so it would probably be easier to put them on before you put this foil vapour barrier, because with the foil vapour barrier you can't see the metal... Um, bits that we're actually screwing them into so it makes it a little bit more difficult but you can feel them so we know where they are the only problem is that some of the metal has holes in which means that some of the screws if you get unlucky might go into an existing hole which won't actually give it any tension so that's kind of a problem but the reason we decided to do it this way is that actually it makes the vapor barrier better I think. I mean I'm not 100% sure and I've seen people doing it both ways Yeah, but they do. this just kind of made a bit more sense to me so that's what we went with. The other thing is that it means that these wood battens aren't going directly onto the metal they've okay. got a bit of a gap between them mm -hmm. which is provided by the vapour barrier and I think if they go directly onto the metal um, there's a couple of things that can happen first of all they can squeak a little bit and hopefully I think this is going to stop that mm -hmm. Um, and second of all, any kind of condensation or anything will actually go into the wood as well, which could potentially rot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Cool. 
There's method in our madness. Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Jay's got all the top row of the battens done. It's looking really nice all along there. And on this section here, he's cut the length of batten into a few different sections so that it fits with the curve of the van because we were thinking we could maybe just bend it and keep it as one whole piece, but actually it meant bending part of it by quite a big bit so yeah he's cut that into sections and screwed that all on just gonna have some lunch and then I think while Jay carries on with the rest of the battening I am going to tackle the rest of the carpeting that we're doing on the back of the van down these sections and up and over the top up there I've covered all the little holes with a few layers of the foil tape yeah. so it's not perfect there's still like a little dint but it is quite hard I guess um, and this is this isn't too thin so you know I don't think you're gonna be able to see it too much it might be a little bit of a dip. where these wires are is a bit more tricky hopefully this bit is gonna well not hopefully it is gonna tuck behind the cladding yeah for that bit there isn't anything we can do with this because that's the earth wiring for the van so I'm just gonna cut around that and this this hole has to stay available for this what this wiring as well um, I could cover it up a little bit, I think, like I've done with this one. Um, but yeah, it's going to still look a bit messy up there even when I put the carpet on, I think. But what we're going to do is build like a fascia, would you call it that? I don't know, like a false, like... I'd probably call it a fascia, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fascia if you want. One of those. Um, just a piece of wood coming down here. Because we're going to need to have a... Um, mosquito net for these back doors if we're gonna have them open so we're thinking that the mosquito net might roll up behind the face here into the gap behind there so that'll all look nice and neat and tidy and yeah hopefully that's the plan anyway do you think that's all right i think it's great yeah that's yeah <laughs> and i am just bashing on with this battening started on the second wall now Got the first one on and I'm just going to crack on and try and get the whole thing done. Something that I didn't fully explain previously is that the reason we figured it was better for the vapour barrier if the battens go on top is that it means you're piercing it less than if you secured all of your cladding through it. Either way you'll need to breach it, but this way it's just the screws for the battens which are going through the barrier rather than the hundreds of nails used to secure the cladding. much of this because it's been really fiddly but I think it's looking pretty neat even though you're not going to see that bit um, this bit down here was probably the trickiest just getting it all tucked in all around here making sure that's all nice and neat so I'm just about to put the trim back on now and we'll see how it looks We're gonna call it a day. We've got most of the battening done. I think we've run out of screws a bit. Uh, no, no, I just started using the other screws that I thought were too long. Oh, right. But actually, they're all right. <laughs> okay. It's still scaring me though, so I've been checking every one running outside and seeing if it's gone through the outside of the van. <laughs> but none of them have yet, so. 
I think it's all right. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we've just got a few more bands to put on um, and the rest of the carpeting to do. We've done that side, looks all right. So yeah, we'll do do that bit tomorrow, innit? it? Nope. Oh, no, not tomorrow. Day off tomorrow. Yeah, day off tomorrow, I've seen the family. Well, we could do them all a little bit in the morning, maybe. Nope. <laughs> day off tomorrow. You look really excited about your wood buying. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> One of the things that we're rapidly getting used to actually is daily, twice daily? No, not <laughs> twice daily. <laughs> Regular trips to hardware stores, Wix, B&Q, CEF, uh, anywhere that sells screw a screw fix. or a yeah, screw fix, tool station, anywhere that sells a screw, a tool, a bit of wood or something that we can use on the van. We go there pretty regularly, so um, today we've come to pick up some timber because we need it to finish the battening, to finish the wall that's going on the bulkhead, and also we're going to start, not cladding, but some of it we're going to clad with plywood, um, so we're going to buy that today as well. Let's do this. Yeah. That's what we are. It's just an absolute disgrace. This stuff, right? Why can't they keep it flat? Come and have a look at this. Every single one of them sheets now is going to be bowed. It's just absolute nonsense. And they've hardly got anything. I'm going to tell you this. Wix is useless. B&Q somehow is better. They're both pretty useless. But yeah. It's only because b and is bigger than this Wix. Yeah. To be honest, the best one, the best wood merchant, is the actual specialist wood merchant that's around the corner. Yeah. But the problem that we've got there is that you can't park. They don't have any parking spaces, which is also ridiculous. So we end up in here shuffling around for some absolute rubbish bits of wood. Uh, it's a nightmare. I think we're gonna have to go to Woody's anyway. It's just not good enough, is it? Sometimes, like, it doesn't matter if it's, like, a little bit bent, but... Yeah, these are bad. Loads of space. People are gonna think we're lying now. <laughs> You'll be able to see how ridiculous the parking slot is, though. <laughs> saying the wood from Woody's is cheaper, yeah? Well, the 25 mil roofing battens are cheaper. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. About half the price, actually. So that's a pretty good deal. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Let's wood it up. Is that a technical term? Um, <laughs> we don't say that in the business. So we're back from Woody's. What's your projects for today? More carpets. <laughs> My favourite. Not... I thought you loved doing it. No, I don't. I like the idea of it, but then when I get into it and it gets really fiddly and hard and it gets stuck on itself and stuck on me and the, yeah. Uh, it's not the, it's cutting the holes out actually that's the worst bit. So, yeah, I'm just gonna get this bit stuck on here at the top. I've got to take these off. When I was down and down along came you Thought you might be alive So weird because it's not really sticky but it sticks to each other so you spray both sides of it and then when they touch they're like <laughs> and voila just got to put the trim back on now that's it for this week chaps thank you for watching and please hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it or found it helpful if you're new around here feel free to subscribe as well and don't forget to click the alarm button so you actually get notified when we post new videos Cause I love you, cause I love you. Next week we're carrying on with the partition wall, so make sure you join us for that. But after I met you